top, we rise. Keep the grind, no disguise. Ain't no fear, not no bravery. Juice came forever savory. Turning dreams into reality. Pushing harder to fly in gravity. Every day's another challenge. Juice gang living with balance. Stay thirsty, not degrees i was like wait a minute is that a glitch is that a typo 112 <laughs> degrees i was walking out there with a duffel bag with some gym clothes so i can get big after work it was crazy and i had a fat ass water gallon I just, you were so after work you would go to the gym station. arizona is the only state that i've seen that has fucking water. hell yeah and bro i would get home maybe like two in the morning bro because i remember i had to walk home too so Damn. it took me about an hour to get home so just imagine working a full or even yeah and getting out and Dude. getting big i was i was dedicated bro it was Pe people think they have the this snow story shit. like <laughs> i used to have to walk to, to school in the snow like 10 feet snow you have the arizona story bro you're like i used to have to walk arizona 130 degree weather what up page restro what up page restro in the house what up what up twitch usually twitch i have an intro but this guy's so damn good hey, i'm just putting up, you on babe? the screen I'm just putting you on the screen right now, my friend. We're just putting them right, right on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kratz on the show. Producer extraordinaire, engineer extraordinaire, rapper extraordinaire. He's all in the mix. And wait till you hear the music. As a matter of fact, let's not wait. Let's go ahead and listen to a tune right now. A little Chris Kratz action. Let me play one of his songs on from Spotify uh, called Self. Just to get you hey, in that oh, vibe, like ladies and gentlemen. Say, my Welcome request, but I like to the stuff. Rage Flaves radio show. Faye Dresto so in the chat. Here. It is another beautiful night. 10.30 p.m. here in California. Chris Kratz on the show. Welcome to the Rage Flays Radio Show. We have another amazing show for you tonight. Faye Dresto in the chat will be with you for at least another hour or so with the famous producer, Chris Kratz. Chris Kratz, welcome to the show, man. How you been? I've been blessed. I've been highly favored and I've been grateful but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give you this. I'm an artist, producer, engineer, but check this out. I prefer the term MC over rapper. Ooh. You know, there's a difference. That's like not back all rappers in the day can MC, stuff. but MCs can rap. Gang, gang. I'm, yeah, I'm cut from that cloth. But nice. I may be young, but I'm up there mentally, bro, bro. You feel I me? Love it. <laughs> I love it. I love you it. Know. Highly favored, highly blessed. You, and the song said, I got God on my back. I don't need nothing else. I sang something like that, right? The opening line of that one? That was sick. Yeah, I got God on my side. I don't need a chick, y'all. Nice. I got God on my on my side. I don't need a chick. Love it. And then uh, and then it said, I love. 
dude, it's such a true story, that song. Like, listening to the words, like, falling for chicks on Insta that you, you're you never going to smash. It's so true. It's, a, it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> I was like, I just had enough of it. I had enough of it. I hated. I had to, man. That's that's what art is about, bro. It's art is like. So the thing about art in any form of art, bro, you know what I mean? It's like a, it's from a per, per, perception or per, perspective, however you want to word it. It's subjective, right? 100%. So I may like this, but John Doe or Jane Doe may not like it. Sure. But it's always about freedom of speech and making unapologetic art. That's how my music stays genuine, and that's why I'll never get writer's block or even fucking beat block, to be honest with you. Wow. So I'm just telling true stories about how I feel. You got to spread that message. Yeah, you got to be that person that talks for people that are afraid to talk or don't have the platform. That's why I feel like it's a big obligation for any entertainers, especially artists in the industry, to use that platform, you know, the same way that you know, Public Enemy did, NWA did, you know, even Michael Jackson, the same shit. You just got to spit your truth, you know, spit your truth because it's always someone else out there that agrees with you, you know? 100%. I think this is a perfect time for what you're doing. You're a rebel, my friend, and there's a whole different rebellion going on right now, and I think you're part of that because here's the thing. You can't at these times, not even on this show, please don't. You can't even say what you want or you can't even really talk about what you want because then you get canceled. You'll end up doing shows late at night like me at 10, 8, 10, 10 p.m. It'll be out of control. So you are part of the rebellion, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> you are, you are, you are, you are a true. Thing is, the trick is to not be scared. Oh. Uh, nice, nice. Well, I'm learning. I'm learning from you. I'm learning from you. I'm a young Paliwan. Um, crazy, crazy, bro. How long you been doing this? You, 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 hey, you're, gang, you're Jedi master, Jedi master, right there. I got, I got to learn from the Jedi. Uh, Paige Resto. Now, bro. by the way, shout out to Paige Resto for introducing me at all. Paige Resto, you guys know him. He's been in the in the in in the studio. He amazing interview. People are blowing up his Instagram. This guy's famous all over the world. Latino artist, extraordinaire, amazing singer, amazing story. He's been in the show. Uh, make sure you follow Paige Resto on instagram youtube as well as his twitch um he doesn't stream but at least follow him become part of his community because he has an amazing story fade resto in the house on the chat uh he says that should be a title to a song right now highly favored heck yeah i'm sure heck yeah i mean it has to be it has highly to be favored. yeah i don't i you know the the the, the thing about Love you, fade. thank you fade yeah fade is amazing um the thing about this show is it's about passion whether you're an artist a painter a chef a business person a, a mc um an engineer a mixologist like yourself this show is about the passion that you have for your art and i love the way you express how you're an artiste um and you, you totally are what i what i what i was tripping out on i, I mean, how, how i want to know how long you've been doing this because when I was listening to the thing, I'm like listening to your music. I just found out about you like six hours ago and I'm sitting there listening to the music, like listening to, I'm like, damn, this is clean. Damn, this is clean. And I'm enjoying it. And then I'm like, I'm like, but it's so clean. Why is it so clean? And then I realized like, duh, Faith had told me like, you're the guy that's mixing it. You're the guy that's engineering it. And so my mind gets blown. You're doing it all. So it's, and, and so you're doing it at a high level because if you listen to it, uh, it's super, super clean. Yeah. Um, the, the story is, so I always have been a poet at least. I may have been eight or nine when I started writing poetry, to be honest with you. And then I started rapping at 13 years old. Keep in mind, I'm about to be 30 in September. At 13, I started rapping. It started off because there's this girl, in our, two girls in our algebra class, Brianna and some other broad. And I was just like mad because they was just starting stuff. You know what I mean? I'm just 13 years old. I, I wrote down a chorus. It goes one down, one to go. Smack that hoe, smack that hoe. I literally rapped it right wow. there to the homie Armand Starks. And our mom was like, bro, you should be a rapper, man. And I was just like, yo. And it hit me right there. I was just like, "Why? Well, I'm always a class clown and entertaining. I got mad game for the ladies. Yo, I need to be an MC. Like, I need to be doing what I love. I'm listening to Lil Wayne. I'm listening to the people who inspired me to actually start rapping. Besides him saying, hey, you should test the waters, bro. 
was Easy E and Tupac in the beginning. They're still the same. Now oh, yeah. it's just more. But Easy E, if it wasn't for Easy E, I wouldn't be or Tupac. I would not have started rapping, or I would have started like a long time after thirteen. Fast forward, um, rap battling in high school, ciphers, mad ciphers, freestyling. I was writing music like all the time. I wrote a sh- load of songs, man. A lot of a lot of my song earlier songs are a thing I made called Flowmance. This is called Flowing with Romance. Love songs to the shorties. You know what I mean? True songs, whatever. And then I just I my first song I actually recorded was on Pro Tools Abbott Vocals. This was like 2012. And I didn't know shit. Terrible quality, by the way. I hope y'all don't ever find that and dig it up when y'all get mad at me. <laughs> but it was on Eminem's The Real Slim Shady Beat. Yeah, The Real Slim Shady Beat. Wow. And it was a fun experience, and I kept going and going. And then, I mean, over the years, I just learned a lot from people. Back in the day, I used to send my tracks to engineers to you know mix it down for me, master it and stuff. And then fast forward all the way. I'm in the East Coast because my dad is a, a former law enforcement and military. Yeah, because you were born in uh, Coast, San Diego, was that correct? Place, Virginia. I was, yes, sir. Yeah, born in San Diego. I've been around a lot of places. Born in San Diego, raised in the Inland Empire, and now I'm back home where I belong. But um, Cali's my favorite state, ride or die, to be honest with you. Uh, so you with know, your dad being memories. in the military, you had to move around a lot. started here, bro. Let's keep it real. You know, it was the it was the law enforcement that actually moved us. Oh, law enforcement. Yeah, regardless. Yeah, it moved us to the East Coast. And that's where, yeah, yeah, drug agent of all, he was a DA agent. You know, he retired now. Nice. But, um, fucking dog, I um, I was just, like, making music, and I didn't, in the East Coast, out in Northern Virginia, it was just, like, it was hard to make a name for myself or whatever, you know what I mean? So I was just, like, I want to learn what I'm, like, paying people to do. I had Logic Pro X. I still got it, but, like, I had Logic Pro X. I had the stuff. I said, hey, let me hustle. So I bought a Graphite M25 piano and started producing music. However, as I was producing, I was engineering at the same time. So I couldn't wait to get off work, to go on YouTube, to go buy a master class, whatever, and to learn this stuff. It was crazy. All on That's YouTube. how I started in the East Coast. Come over, I move out to the Southwest. Yeah, YouTube and master classes. Wow. So there's like certain websites you can find a master class to teach you stuff or you can find it. Yeah, but that's how it literally it was. And my earliest days were just samplings. I love to sample and shit. I love DJ Primo. I love Kanye. I love Dr. Dre, Jay Dilla. I love sampling. I just love it. I was just this. I was on every sample site. I was learning shit. I had the well, you're a big piano and stuff Rock fan like as that. well. I read somewhere. And I was also engineering while I was learning to produce. Big Pete Rock and Big Pete Rock, CO Smooth, Common. All those dudes. I love nice. P-Rock, man. I love P-Rock. I love Nas. That's the cloth that I'm cut from. You know, all of those guys. Damn, And Nas then I moved out to the Southwest in about um, two years. And yeah, I mean, it was a wild move. Just a friend from college. She was like, I know about this place called Yuma. It's border town, Mexico. I know you love Mexican food. I'm like, yeah, I do. Shit, let's go. You know, I want to get out. I want to get out the East Coast. Oh, moved damn. Moved out there. And then she sold you on the Arizona met a lot of dream. People, like right off the bat, there are musicians. And stuff. Yep, sold me the. I fell for it. <laughs> met, but I met the greatest individuals out there, and I did mad shows out there. Nice. And I kept getting better. I just the more I do it. I was I was literally engineering about five or six people's tracks at one time because we had a collective called AK, and we were doing shows around that city. Oh man, I was you got work. The name. I'm a funny dude. I'm entertaining. The bars got better. Yeah, I put in work in that heat, bro. In that heat. And I remember performing oh, outside, more. but I said, I'm going to do it because I got supporters and I got, I'm going to do it because I love it. You know, fast forward a couple years, I'm still in Arizona. You know, I get enrolled into Full Sail University after all the, the, you'll later in this interview, you'll, I'll tell you stories about trials and tribulations. But after all the shit I went through, when I cleared and got free, it was just myself, you know, I didn't have no crazy broad with me, whatever. I enrolled in Full Sail. For audio production after all these years i had hey. oh you went you know, to school for it. mastering making beats rapping and stuff i finally yeah now i'm in school for it i barely had to do it after all these years i finally got down to it how old were you when you went to school for it finally it's just been a journey since then bro this was just in 2022 man this was november oh, of 22 when i got the phone call that i was accepted i originally applied in september yeah i originally applied in september of 2022 
However, I was still on probation, you know what I mean, at that time. So I guess I wasn't able to be in school and on probation. Probation ended in November of 22, November 7th to be exact. November 26th, I get the phone call, hey, you are, you've been accepted. You know what I mean? You're good. You're good to go. So it's almost like God wanted school? me to get off probation to get on to education. From probation... No, I was on probation uh, for a uh, disturbance. I slammed the, I slammed the car door and the glass broke, and they put me on three years probation for that. Oh damn! <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so it's some real legit, like some some uh, <laughs> some uh, minor criminal activity you're you're involved in. Yeah, yeah, it ain't any. Yeah, it was just that you know. Nice. But three years probation. That's what it didn't allow me to go to school. But so yeah, but um, I. Got free that same month. I'm ready. I'm enrolled in Full Sail, bro. And I've been there since then. I'm doing good. Where and is I it? I released at? my first album on 420 of 2023. It's on. It's called Raw. If you listen to it, every song in there, with the exception of one, is sampled. I've sampled uh, Phil Collins, Fat Boys, uh, Tupac, uh, Hella Wu Tang, um, a lot of shit. A lot of. I really got down with the production with that. You know, I wish the engineering was better, but I wasn't as good as I was now. But it still is decent. Where's it's the Where's Raw. the school it's located a at? Of me smoking a, a pre roll with a core forty five. Oh, the school is in Winter Park, Florida, but I go to school online. But it's oh, in Florida. nice. Yeah, it's it's located in Florida. So when I graduate next year, I'm flying to Florida. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Hell so, yeah! So uh, I just been consistent with that, and the networking has been, yeah, it's been off the roof. To the point where I recently had a show at Los Angeles at the Skip Town Playhouse, and it was my Ooh. first show in two years. And I called the Return of the King because it was a comeback. I was ready, and I killed that shit. The best twenty-one minutes of my life. Even got that bitch on YouTube. Was that the show where uh, where uh, Classified played? Fade was there. A bunch of people were there. No, Fade. He performed at that place, but he wasn't there. This was recent. He wasn't there at that one. Oh, okay. I tried to get him to come. He couldn't make it because he's in the same city, but I tried to get him to come. But yeah, he's been there before and he loved it. So he told me ahead of time, that's a good place to perform. And I love that. I even got to actually do some engineering on the fucking microphone and help with the, the front of house engineer. So it was like wearing a lot of hats just once again, just being the ultimate dude, just like Russ is, you know what I mean? Like fucking amazing. I love doing shows. If you ask me, bro. When you when you're in a real artist, that's why I say I'm an MC and a rap artist versus just a rapper. You need to appeal to an audience. You need to perform your heart out. You need to perform. This is a performing arts industry. You feel me? Yeah. You need to be going on tour, doing some shows, right? That's your gold right there. It's cool to sell records. It's cool to have your shit streaming and hit a billion streams, whatever you do. Do them shows. If you don't got that stage presence, man, I can't validate you. You can't go on down to the books of history, you know, as one of the most talented dudes. Michael Jackson is a perfect example. His yeah. stage presence got females passing out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Take off his glasses. Shaking their boots. Oh, they all passing out. He kissed one girl. Oh, Michael just kissed me. Exactly. exactly. Because he's a performer. By the way, he's my favorite performer. And I did a lot of pelvic thrust. Every show I do a pelvic thrust for Michael Jackson. Rest in <laughs> peace, King. Pelvic thrust. Honor, 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 you know? <laughs> honoring Michael Jackson with the pelvic thrust, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, 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 some of the um, up-and-coming performers that have come on the show um, or that are out there listening to the show heard exactly what you just said. Um, because, I, I, you know, the, the wonderful thing about this show is having these new artists come on the show, and that's the reason why I love my, the. I personally love my show, <laughs> my own show, because of the passion of not me, because of the passion of the artists that come on, their stories, and they've they've been. It, it, we've had intimate uh, conversations here on the couch. There's a couch. You'll you'll you'll, you'll be in the studio uh, eventually as well. But we have these conversations where they're on the couch and they're talking about those uh heebie that they get the nervousness that they get performing on stage and all that you know they of course you know years and years go by and they're on their laptop they're they're mixing music they are, got the garage band their beats are tight their songs are amazing they've got amazing beats they've got an amazing story behind their songs but some of them you know struggle with that performance aspect so your everything you just said was 100 percent right so getting that performance down it has to be done it has to be the fear that gets you know pushed like pushed through so that you can get to the next level 
Hey, man, bro. Performance is everything because you are an entertainer, my guy. You know what I mean? You yes. don't get so far if you just pop in, quote, online or on the socials. People are going to want to see you in person and see who this who this really this person really is when they go to your show and they see that you you know if like you got a show where you just being whack and you don't got no stage presence they're like damn why was this music slapping but it's like why would i pay 300 dollars for his ticket or 50 dollars whatever mm. but when they see you like yo really talking to the crowd and you having fun doing pelvic thrust and you just doing stuff and and the audio goes out so you freestyle over it and you entertain the crowd and you get them chanting random shit that's why i perform with my vocals that's off. Entertainer. I have, it's called a tv mix it's everything but the lead vocals so it's just yeah, you know, and the only reason I do it with the vocals is if I couldn't access the file to make it without it. But, you know, I still will do it. It's just that way. I do that for two reasons. One, because it's more professional and it's more control and it's a live show. You don't want to be restrained to having to say the words that are on your song the same way. And it doesn't match up with the same tone that you recorded with. The second reason is because if you for some reason stutter over a word or forget your bars guess what and i did it before freestyle something else you may get so nervous at the amount of people in the crowd or whatever that you might forget your next bar coming up that's gonna be a fire bar me like i said i told you i, I started off freestyling and writing and battling right yeah I freestyle over the beat it, sometimes man i'll be like the last the last eight bars i would say you know what y'all i didn't even say that in the song but i said that in the show and it still went good it's just a professional thing you got to be ready and that's where becoming a performer is important. That's when that becomes the clutch. You got to be just like a soldier in a, a battlefield. Shit happen, get your M16, whatever you got, be ready for that. You know what I mean? If you're not ready for it, you're done, right? Stage presence is everything. I don't care what artists say. Have your streams, have your merchandise, your clout, whatever you want to call it. Stage presence is everything. It's that's everything. Awesome. You're, you're an entertainer. Yeah, you got to be ready. Um, yeah, I think a, a lot of the performers I hear, they do have the, the vocals on. I would do it like that, too, because I, I can't remember crap. So I'd be wanting to have the vocals. I'd, I'd be copying myself on if I had a record like that. But you're, if you didn't, you're right. You can you can you can like freestyle and and it, it's not all and what's cool about it, it's kind of like giving a speech like if you're giving a speech and you just read off the paper um it's it, it kind of doesn't flow but if you if you memorize most of your speech and then you and you can kind of like flow off of it or it's not it's not always the same every time you say it it gives it feels more real and i think that that really it's how like the audience can gravitate towards you or like they can really uh, you can really connect with the audience at that level, at that high level that you're performing at when you're able to just kind of go off the cuff type of thing. Thank you. Like, it just shows that he's ready. He or she is ready. They're actually an artist. And realistically speaking, I I barely rehearsed, rehearsed the last show I did, and it still came out good just because – a natural born performer. He's ready for it. I did a lot of physical and mental training for that show. I didn't rehearse none of it because I know my songs. You know what I mean? I just had them. I would just do push ups, sit up, standing squats, cardio in the pool with my music playing, rapping to it. You know what I mean? That's literally what it was. And then rapping at my old job, McDonald's. You know, so with that being said, it wasn't like I was ready with the moves, like the temptations. I went yeah. in there, I dominated, and stuff happened. I just, hey, I don't got the vocals on. Let me go ahead and spit some bars over it. You know what I mean? Like when you hyping up the crowd, dun, 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 put your hands up, hands up. That's because you can do that because you don't got the vocals over it. You know, I'm bothering you when it's the intro of the song. Yeah. Everybody put your hands up, hand it down, whatever the case is. Boom. Skip town, skip town, skip town, da, da, da. This is how we going to get down just because I'm a natural performer as opposed to just waiting for my bars to come in or when the chorus comes, whatever, and just to start rapping it. You have to yeah, like I've seen that even on the TV. You, don't, you want to look in control on stage. Like I've seen, I've seen like, I don't know if it was Mariah Carey. So are people like, well, you, you know, the famous uh, thing that happened a couple of years ago with Mariah Carey and the, and the new year's thing where she lost, she lost her place. That happens to professionals even. So I, and I've seen it where like, 
uh, uh, somebody's been at a concert and they have they have their bars playing behind them and they want to do what you just said, like they want to go off and, and start and they're talking and they do go off. They're talking to the crowd, but then their bars are still playing behind them. Like what the what is this? It's like this sounds sound so weird, like so cheesy that their bars yeah. are playing behind them and it's they're and they're doing stuff in front of it, like weird. Yeah, that's literally that's why you only perform with just your chorus and the ad libs on, because the chorus is the main part that everyone knows, right? Right. Like you know, I mean, I mean, I can tell you a lot of chorus. We know songs because of the chorus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The verse is just where yo, it just sounds natural. It's just the beat. That chorus is good. And then after you're done with your verse, when the chorus comes on with the vocals playing and only in the chorus and the ad libs, that's your chance to recuperate and charge up for the next track or whatever's come the next verse. That should take your breath. Those eight bars that you got in your chorus, those 16 bars, okay, good. You're saying, yeah, uh-huh, and then bump, bump, bump the chorus, and you get the microphone, get them to repeat the chorus. It seems more professional. It's Smart. like in sync, and it just seems like just perfectly as opposed to like, yeah, struggling, and, you know, like it just seems so smooth and cohesive as a performance in general. That's the type of shit that you hear. Like I got a Michael Jackson live performance vinyl. Or Jackson Five live, you know, that's the shit that makes it to those live performances and those live DVDs, or whatever. That's the shit you remember, as opposed to just depending on all the vocals and shit, which is sucks because a lot of the newer mainstream ones. I'm not gonna say any names, Daisy Red, you know, but <laughs> they depend on backing vocals. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just like it is to me. It's just an insult to the culture. That's karaoke night. You feel me? Well, they didn't. They, <laughs> like, they, they, know, like, they, we, they used to look down on that. If you remember, uh, who were those twins that got the Grammy Award and they uh, and then they got caught um, in the eighties? Millie Vanilli. Millie bro. Vanilli. Millie, they, they used to call that Millie, Millie Vanilli. Vanilli. Now, Millie now Vanilli, it's everybody's something doing like it. Millie, or Millie Vanilli. Yeah. It's crazy. Let's listen to another everyone's, uh, everyone's track. Everyone's lip syncing and dick. but they was they was catfishing. Yeah. Oh, big time. Let's listen to another track on uh, uh, called because you're you're busting so much knowledge. I want to play the song called "What Do You Know." What you know about it for real? I produced that joint, by the way. <laughs> nice. If you're just joining us, Chris Karatz on the Race Flays Radio Show. Shout outs to Auburn J. I collab with them straight out of Houston, Texas. That's Auburn J. Shout out to Auburn J. Come on the show. Yeah, the dude. Yeah. Shout outs to Auburn J. Yeah, we work on a project now as we speak. Me and him, another cat named Solo Rocks. They're both from Houston, Texas area. We're nice. Working on the collab right now as literally we speak. They got. Oh, oh you got another <laughs> one coming out with yeah. them. <laughs> Yep, we do with him and this other dude named Solo Rocks, who's also a he's a, another producer and artist as well. Uh, man, I'm telling you, man, I'll be collabing like we I'm about it, about it. The work ethic's off the roof, man. That song talks about work ethic. Let's listen to something from Picante, the EP, the extended play. This is mostly is am I correct? This is mostly kind of just more of your production type stuff. Is that correct? 
Yeah, Picante and Sold Out are both beat tapes. I released Picante nice. on Cinco de Mayo intentionally because it's Latin beats. I wanted to show people my versatility. And realistically speaking, I love making Latin reggaeton and pop, EDM and house. I love making those productions. Where does that you come know? from? So you, you, you got a little Latino in you? Say you... that, hey, he's just not some... Man, I got two. I got two part Latin daughters. Man, I've been in the two hundred. I'm the king of Pasole. There's a song called <laughs> Yo Keto. That, that I even say that I'm the king of Pasole. I'll be rapping in Spanish. <laughs> just yeah, just there's a song put it called Yo Keto. Check that out. out Featuring Mateo. It's like yeah, I'll be. That's awesome. Yeah, but the inspiration came from being out in that city I told you about, Yuma, Yuma, Arizona. That's border town, Mexico. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm going out there. Me. I'm listening to a lot of reggaeton, a lot of Latin. A, yeah, corridos, bantas. Damn. So you got Everything, all that influence man. to start using it. Speaking Spanish, and you, and you know, oh hell yeah! I went everywhere I went. I'm a sponge. I take knowledge, bro. Everywhere I go, bro. Nice. You know, it's never a day where I have beat block or writer's block. I love yeah, that. Man, I was just like, keep saying that what, throughout what, the show. Like, I'm, I'm I MC, never but... get writer's block or beat block. Those are the two things that that. That uh, that uh, constantly haunts artists, but you get no beat block, no writer's block. You those those are the things you don't want, and you don't get those. <laughs> yeah. Let's listen to Senorita from the EP yeah, Picante. Yeah, tell everyone. Da, da. Nice. I love stuff like this. This these instrumentals. I'm gonna. I play music during the week. I'm gonna place this stuff on my on my show. Good looking, respect. Yeah, that's why I made it so it can be everywhere. Cause not everyone's gonna want to play your latest track, but they don't mind having some music for their their ads and their small businesses, or to have it on their podcast or whatever. That's it's sort of something to nod to. I mean, there you go. That sound like it should be in a Fast and Furious movie. You know what I mean? Like, there, see, yeah, that's there thinking, bro. That, a lot of places uh, to these, man. You got to open doors for yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, dude, you got to be open to that. The big picture, you know, for this type of art, you've got to be able to make some 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 coin doing this. It's just so beautiful, and, it, and not even the coin is the biggest thing, but the ability to have more of an audience listen to your art i think that's the most important thing i'm going to put on pariso as well as we're still talking here with chris karatz the engineer and artist born in san diego went out to virginia got out to yuma arizona and the heat the cayente the spice started getting into him and now the flavor of pariso is on the table on the plates in his new ep picante his beats are incredible. These are going to be on the Race Flays radio show very, very soon. With his permission, we're going to be playing these like crazy. I love this stuff. It's got amazing rhythm and cool, mellow vibe to it. Dude, you can just chill and listen to this. But still like this, like this, there's still like this. You know, the clap is in the back, you know, it's this pumping, but still chill vibe. It's pretty cool the way you can balance that. It's that carne music, bro. There, there you gotta make people want to dance. Dancing makes people happy, you know. Even old people, they like dancing, bro. Even um, well, how about what, what, even who? Spice things up, bro. You can't be dull. I don't like my chicken bland. <laughs> exactly. You who gotta likes spice. dancing? Even old people love dancing, oh, bro. Yeah. You know Dude, what I mean? You get... Old people like it more than young people. Old young, people are la young people are lazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Out of control, man. Oh. I know what's up with that, bro. Shoot, I'll be dancing. Yeah, you got to get out there. You got to get out there. Um, talk, who are some of the, who are some of the, besides doing your, you, what came first? Was it, was it 
your own songs that you started putting out or were you working on other people's stuff first? It so, sort of sounded like you had your stuff working on it first. Always me, man. Yeah, I was I was emceeing before I was even producing or engineering, bro. Nice. Like, a, you know, it started off with writing music and just like rapping. And then it was freestyle battling. You know, there's probably an old YouTube video from 2012 of me ripping someone apart at Knott's Berry Farm in my senior, you know, field Dang. trip. Rap battling, emceeing, writing music. I used to host rap battles at lunch in my high school. I used to make flyers. Man, I could pull on a crowd. There's still pictures online that I have of how many people would show up to those battles and we were just having fun you know what i mean and i would but to me it was it was like hey this is what i'm gonna be doing for my life so i'm gonna establish my name right here before i graduate type of thing smart you know so it started off with my own songs first and yeah it was just like i said the first song i ever recorded was on eminem's uh the real slim shady beat you know and then i got on kanye west and carrie hilson's love comes around mm. you know and that's where it started and then, yeah, it's a, it was years before I actually produced my own stuff, engineered my own stuff. It was years, but I was always down to, I was one of those guys, I started off going on YouTube, looking up beats and stuff, or just going just to stay active and stuff. And I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't as seasoned at first. It took me a while, but the only way you do that, bro, is just to keep doing it. Yeah, doing I was going to say, focusing you're- Focusing on it and practicing it. Everywhere right. I went, I took music with me. That's where you kind of built your chops early in the game. You're in high school. You have the balls enough to go and promote with flyers and tell everybody, yo, I'm going to be at this s circle right here at 3 o'clock like, like in the movie, and we're going to we're gonna battle it out. And uh, you, you do these rap battles. I, do you, dude, that's where you – is this – this is probably where you just start to develop your style, your performance aspect, be able to be um, comfortable around a crowd, and there's a large crowd. Um, uh, peers, you know, if I think about high school, I'm terrified of the people. I, if they, but, but you're like, dude, you were performing right in front of these people in high school at a young age, everybody in the school and not being afraid. So I can imagine now you're not afraid to perform anywhere. No, I'm not, bro. And I was, it's crazy. It kind of like school does translate onto a lot of that. But even before I was rapping, bro, I was I love being a class clown. I like entertaining people. Oh wow. Right. I feel like there's no losing in that game. But when it came to stuff, yeah, when it came to stuff like class projects to present, I was always the one that was most vocal and out there and outspoken. So just translate, I said, Hey, this is the fucking perfect career for me. You can't catch me in no cubicle taking paperwork and shit like that. You gotta catch <laughs> me on the stage and making music and entertaining people. You know, I could do some stand up comedy too, low key if I put my mind to it. You know, oh, but yeah. hey, well, one quest at a time. You know, there's you know, nothing you can't do. Something, yeah. Because and acting as well. Yeah, I, acting. Great point. Acting, comedy. You could do speeches. You could do emceeing. You mm -hmm. when you are not afraid to. I think the biggest barrier a lot of times is just speaking in front of people. That's like the biggest people. People fear three things in life: speaking. Dying in a car crash and sharks. I think those are the three things. I'm not. I'm not a scientist, but I think. Those are the, but it's, so, <laughs> yeah. so if you can not be afraid, like it puts you at such a next level thing because now they can count on you to be the MC. Now they can count on you to be the rapper. Now they can you to be the guy in the front of the business and and represent the business or represent the show. And because nobody wants to do that, right? I love to freaking go up on stage and now here it comes crash. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Karatz on the show. That's my thing. I love to do it. You do too. So that takes you to a whole nother, a whole nother level that people can count on you to bring the show, bring the showmanship, bring the entertainment, take people to the next level. Yeah. And when it comes to rap, like you can do so many things. So like I can feel it now. I'm starting to understand as I talk to you more and more how easy the rap part or the MC part might just be when you're at the show because you could you do all sort of other things. You're you're like this is nothing almost. Hell yeah, exactly. A, a man of many hats. And before we even carry on, I want to give a shout out to uh, Corey Cooper, aka stage name Corey Bricks. Um, I acted in a short film called Beat the Case. I played a, a, a fiend named Peanut 
and he sounded just like this. And it was it was night, boy. How you doing? I, I killed that part. I loved it, and it was the funnest experience. Unfortunately, that's the only acting exp- like gig that I had. But trust me, I want more. I love Where's being this behind film the at? camera. And I did voice acting for Minutes of Madness. Shout out. It's on YouTube, bro. I can definitely provide that link. I can definitely get that link. It's on YouTube. It's a it's a it's a put together. It's a put together. It's just like a quick, you know, it's a 30 minute film. We didn't have much professional equipment, you know, but we had the people that were willing to be there. And I was the one that played the crackhead that snitched on uh, the crack dealer to set him up with undercover officer. You know what I mean? So it's but like it was Chris a fun Rock, experience uh, because I got to get outside that box. I'm a when he was in what was Kingpin. New Jack. Yep, that's new, what it was. was. It that's City. literally what Yeah. Oh, you know what? It's New Jack City. Remember, yeah, Pookie when he was in the, in the yeah, dance in the fucking crack house doing <laughs> yeah. His, yeah. He was like new a Jack City, yeah. the business and then I'll tell you like, Yeah, and that's what inspired that character. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna try to find that right now. I'm gonna see if I can he, find it. Yeah, he was yeah, I that was We gotta see that. Funny story. I just um Chris for some reason Chris Rock plays a good crackhead, but I just saw I'm gonna get you sucker too. Have you seen I'm gonna get oh, you sucker? Oh hell yeah. How much for how much for one rib? <laughs> bro. He's like, how much for a yeah, soda? Fifty cent, fifty cent. <laughs> he's like Bro, he... how would you I just how would you just pour the soda in my hand? How much for that? And he's like, get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> pull a big old wad of cash out. I was done, bro. Dude, I love Shout that out to scene. Chris Rock for being an inspiration and a talented dude. I'm sorry you guys. Yeah, I'm sorry you got slapped by Will Smith, bro. But I mean, <laughs> shit happens, bro. He t- Will Smith. Shout out to Will Smith. Shout out to Will Smith. Will Smith, a, a come goal, on the show. You, you want to talk about it? An inspiration you, to me you know? as well. But I, Will Will Smith might come on the Race Flays Radio Show to apologize to Chris Rock. Inspiration. I think he wants to do that. <laughs> well, okay, will Jada Pink and allow that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta ask first. Make sure you ask you know, first. Will. Let's keep it 100 here. You Don't know? be coming over to the boys, to the boys studio without asking. Yeah. Make sure you ask. I have to ask you yeah. to come here. So yeah, I understand. I get it. I get it. Because you know you're going to hear about it. Yeah, you don't want to hear about it. You don't want to get stuck. You want to get caught up. What's that? What's the movie called again? That you're in? Beat the Case. Which one? Beat the it's case. It's called uh, Beat Beat the Case. I'm a. You know what? It's actually. Let me see my drum dot io. It's um, it's a hyper. It's like a. It's like a link tree on steroids. That's what I'm about to send you. And in that movie, what's it called? In that in that link I send you, it's gonna have that page. So give me a couple of seconds. Sorry, cool. Let's see real quick. Yeah, it doesn't take you long. That's fine. I'm just interested in seeing it. I can just imagine. Crazy, crazy. I don't like this. I'm gonna sit oh, to cool. You this is attached right here. Well, actually, I can. Yeah, I can literally send it to you here. Yeah, I can send it to you here, and I'm on the soundtrack. I actually performed the song that I'm in the soundtrack of my latest show called uh, F3 Fuck Fake Friends. So check this out. I put this in the chat. First time chatter. Oh, Crash Beats. He's oh, on the show and the chatter. Active. That is so weird. Oh, it's not active? Uh, for some reason, but it's all right because I got the actual link to the movie right there. Boom. That YouTube link I dropped in the chat. Let me see. Oh, it probably didn't show up because it's, yeah, it's not going to show up. Because you're because nobody's allowed to put links in the chat, but it's all right. It's all right. We'll, I drop... we'll, we'll look at it another time. I just wanted to oh. see, see that. Um, let's listen to it. Let's listen to a Spirito from the uh, Picante album real quick. Let's see here. Oh yes. Man, Gallante. If you're just joining us, Chris Karatz on the Race Flays Radio Show. The song's entitled Espiritu from the album Picante.
Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Kicks in with the harder bass in the middle, huh? Yeah, I love that bass, man. You gotta be with the bass. Boom, 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 boom. And then it pulls out for the guitar. It's like that four on the four bass drum. Mm hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Not hearing the music there. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Maybe it. How's that paint and polish? Let's take it back or we'll rewind it back. Now you can hear. Nice. There you What's go. What's up, paint, paint polish? Paint polish in the house. Shout out to paint polish. That's my mod. She is poor lady. I mean, I'd be going live late at night. <laughs> Shout out to the late nighters, bro. The night hours I can represent. Let's go. Shout out to Indonesia. You're just waking up. It's around 11 in the morning. Or maybe it's about 12 in the afternoon in Indonesia. My Indonesia friends, wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey, oven bakey. East Coast, 2 a.m. Holy moly. Thank God for these rhythms. Keeping you alive, Damn, bro. keeping you awake. Respect, bro, respect. Espiritu is the name of the song. The album, Picante, the EP from Chris Kratz. Engineer, artist, MC. And he's with us tonight on the Race Lays Radio Show. Crazy, 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 bro. So talk about some of the artists that, that people might recognize or know that you've worked with or not worked either way. You, you've been, obviously people want these beats. So who's been who's been really hitting you up lately for, for beats? Shout outs to uh, this girl named Sabrin2 Tiger. We have met on Facebook and she's been really supportive and stuff and she had bought some beats and stuff. Auburn J from Houston, Texas. He always like buys my exclusives. Nice. And solo rocks as well. They always work together and stuff. That was a guy we collab with. Solo rocks. Um, there's a cat named uh Ser Sergio Allen. Yeah, Solo Rocks. Yeah. He's a he's he collab with Auburn J. They have an album called Solo J. And they're they're really talented, you know. Lena, Lena Aquafina, Aquafina out of Texas. Texas. Can't, Can't forget about, about you, girl. Look at I me. Mean, Lena Aquafina. Uh, a house beat for her inspired by Gypsy Woman. Woman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's, she's really, really talented. talented. You know, there's, there's a lot of... And Saber 2 Tiger. You know, I have beats for the homies. Prosperous. Shouts to Prosperous from Arizona. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Auburn J is the one you want to... There's a track that I produced called Autobiography by Auburn J on all platforms. Old school storytelling. Something, something that, that uh, uh, MCA would have been, been on, something, something that Scarface would have been, been on. And he did a music video, video to it and inspired. And I'm very proud of him. Yeah, yeah it's, it's called Autobiography by Auburn J. The same guy collab with it. You know, that track is produced by me. You know, it's lovely. And shouts to the homie Psychotic. I made a King ISO beat for him and he copped it. And I can't wait to see what he does with it. You know. Nice, nice. Auburn J come on the show. Sergio come on the show. Solar Rocks come on the show. Lena Aquafina and Saber Two Tiger come on the show, so we can find out what your passion is and why you do what you do. This is the Race Lays Radio Show. It's all about passion, um, and the passion for the things that you have in your life. Um, crazy, crazy for just joining us, Chris Karatz. Some of the music I noticed, like, are you? Do you like like house music and stuff like that? You have like ambient type like feel to some of your songs do you do you do you do you the kids say f with that these days yeah 
a lot, bro. Um, a lot of so my favorite genre of music is funk overall. But I like all music. The trick to my production is I listen to every type of music. I don't just listen to hip hop or you know R and B. I listen to everything, bro. I was listening to the Police the other day. I was listening to Nirvana. Then I listened to uh, Chris Yockney. He's an Iranian artist. Um. A lot of house. I like the song called Flowers by Armand Vain, something I can't pronounce. You know, some house guy. A lot of the inspiration, it comes from music from like all over. I was listening to Roman guitar. Obviously, I'm listening to Delphonics like a lot. Nice. You know, um, Bootsy Collins is one of my biggest inspirations. Hell yeah. George Clinton Parliament, Funkadelic. Uh, Classic rock, ACDC, you know, Damn. Uh, I mentioned Nirvana already, uh, Eric Bodon, I can't pronounce that last name, you know, I listen to everything and a lot of shit gets creative and it gets stuck in my brain, you know what I mean, like, if I wanted to, if I could sing, I could, I could probably make an R&B album, I'm trying to learn how to sing, but I listen to everything, bro, and that's how I'm able to get the creative side, if I just listen to, like, hip-hop and rap and R&B, it would close a lot of like doors and it would kill the creative aspect of being a musician. That's why I always tell people, it's just like, yeah, I'm a multi-genre artist and also a multi-genre producer, but you know, I may be MC, but hey, I can make a rock record. I can make a house record for you. We can do this. You know what I mean? The key word is versatility. Yeah, you could, you could, you could, you could, I mean, it'd be sick to see you produce a rock album. And then I think you're absolutely right. You can't close yourself off. A lot of the hip hop artists that I've been seeing lately have been mixing a lot of the rock with the hip hop, especially the metal edge to it. Um, even some of the trap rock, like trap metal, stuff like that. They're just mixing all the genres, which is incredible because it's, it, in my day, it was like rap show, punk rock show. There was no like, togetherness there was, and there were everybody wasn't hanging out together yeah and so it really impressed me when i go to shows now to see the long hair dudes rapping on stage with metal tracks in the background or vice versa the rapper dudes with with with, with, with metal in the background um and everybody just uh collaborating and also being so positive towards each other and just pumping each other up the positive vibe in the hip-hop scene right now underground scene is particularly is is impressive and you know what since you're on the subject i have made a uh an alternative rock beat before i also used to go to a lot of punk rock shows shout out to my homie toe main alex alcala from yuma arizona we used to go to he used to pick me up and we go to punk rock shows there's a lot of punk rockers that know me well they know me as name porno it stands for player one raps and operates you know but it was like you have like a shirt that you wear that says that a lot of punk rock shows yeah yeah i have a player one raps and operates porno um i have a canvas that said it's player one with the pineapple on it and it says l operator shout outs to um the homie dylan ramirez from arizona that painted that custom for me you know nice the, the, you know, yeah, I, went I went to a lot of punk, punk rock shows. shows. I've been to a lot of mosh pits, performed at punk rock shows, shows whether I was rapping, we were just having fun. Dang. And it just opened like a lot of doors, man. It just kind of kept the rush. Yeah, it kept the rush up, bro. So it's yeah. just like, you come to me, you're a, you're John Doe, you're a punk rocker, or you're a rock star. Guess what? I can produce you, bro. I can engineer your stuff. I got you, bro. I got all That's the That's crazy that you, you can say that. theory behind it, and you just put yourself there, you can... Yeah. Yeah, because exactly. you can you so can engineer. One day I get to work with Travis Barker. You <laughs> there know. you go. Exactly. Some Blink One Eighty Two production, and uh, that's crazy because yeah, a, lot, a lot of people I'm, can say that. that. They could just yeah, yeah. most people could just uh, do beats, but you're an engineer. You're you're able to mix. You're able to understand the trackings and everything like that and the levels, so you can you can mix a whole band no problem. You understand exactly. sound, um, so you're able to able to do that. Stay busy, which is awesome. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's cr it's crazy. Um, you know that's how I started. A high school punk rock singer, got into uh, jazz and Latin jazz percussion and stuff like that. Over. 
you know, in my 30s and 20s and 30s. Um, so it's crazy where music will take you. I even DJed for a while. Um, so I have a ton of vinyl. Actually, today I was just um, taking some of my vinyl. I have a I have a turntable here that you plug into your computer and it just takes the vinyl and puts it in your iTunes. So I've been messing with that and, and, and getting these sets together so that I can play them like on Wednesday nights, I do. I play play uh, vinyl and stuff for my vinyl, uh, my vinyl treasures here. Um, but we should do a show one day, bro. Me and you, and you just send me a list of songs that you're inspired by, and then I create a playlist, and then we play it, and you talk about the songs, especially from an engineering aspect and, and ear like that you have. Um, it'd be incredible. I'm 100% down. It's funny you say that. I have like at least 200 to 300 vinyls Damn. that I have here. And I mean, half of which are my, they're in the garage and then in the laundry room. I have a cord that connects to my interface and I sample a lot of my vinyls, bro. And I got the, um, it's just a simple uh, Crossley vinyl you got at Walmart, you know. But it has this pitch manipulation thing and then like the speed manipulation thing. So it's like, I'll get like a vinyl, I'll just hear something, I'll be like, what would that sound like if I pitch that down on tape? Turn a pitch down, down, record it, and I'm sampling something just like that. Dang. It's that fucking easy. Dude, it's, it's so quick, isn't it? And, and I, yeah, yeah, I go to the record store, get into the vinyls. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really, it's really quick. Because I mean, you get, you get the, your chops, chops, you put them on your your keys or your MPD two eighteen, your Akai MPC, whatever. You know, you get your drums from the vinyls. You can manipulate it. You mix it. You good. You got something. You know, I did that with. Um, I did. Janice Ian, Janice Janice, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. She's a country singer. Um, Johnny Pineapple and Chicago Blues, and made a beat, you know, in like an hour just by sampling those three vinyls. The best part about vinyls is so much suspicion to it. If you go to a Spotify or a YouTube playlist, you you know what you're going to listen to, so you're picking and choosing. If you get a vinyl and you just say, "I just want something that makes me feel this way," talk to the record store dude, you get it. You playing it, it don't got like, oh, track two is going to be this track, track three. It just plays, and you just got to hear it. That means you got to yeah. train your ear. You're like, wait up. I could sample that. I can use that. Boom. That's how I do that. And that's how I never, that's how it is. There's one thing for someone to hit me up and say, hey, can you make a custom beat and sample this? For me, I got my vinyls, man. I go to it, and I'm just like, boom. Custom I every day, bro. Well, custom I cuts. Fat boys the other day. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I noticed it. It's it. it the, di the difference is when I like because we're such a fast paced lifestyle now. But what I liked and I enjoyed today this morning was like I had to put the album on and just because it said Roy Ayers doesn't mean like every single song was good or was what I was looking for. I had to find the one I wanted. And so you have to sit there and listen, move the needle. Put it to different spots and, see, and you find I, I wanted some, you know, I play a lot of funk and stuff like that. So I try to find the more funky beats. Um, so I had to go through like 30, 40 albums to find specific songs that were going to work for that next set. So I love that you have to take the time, you have to listen to it. And if you, if you love music like me and you do, it's an, it's a pleasure. It's like, the, I got to listen to a vinyl all morning. This is the, I had a great morning. Exactly. That's, That's it. it. I, I literally, literally so I wake up, up and 90% uh, of, of my days, and this, this is just like only like maybe a, one day out of the week, week I, may I may not do this. this. I wake, I wake up, up um, I, I put on my, my vinyl, vinyl and I do core work in my room, room. whatever Every vinyl, vinyl it is, is, you know, and then I'll have another vinyl ready after that. It's just something like, oh, I haven't listened to you. I was just listening to Fat Boys, the Fallen in Love joint, and then the same one they did that track with the Beach Boys. And then, and then I would I listen, listen to Run DMC, my DJ like the Fat Boys are back sort of thing. I would listen to that Beverly Hills soundtrack, you know. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> the Fat Boys are back. I used to have that. I um, heard some. I even have the vinyl that has "Can You Feel It" on. Yeah, man, I had I got Fresh Prince vinyl. I'll listen to Michael Jackson. Uh, listen to Cheryl Lynn. Nice. It's just like I just go through and like, hey, what do I want to listen to? I mean, I got. I got what's that? I got Quincy Jones. Oh yeah, vinyl. I got a I fucking got one of those. um. What's the old boy that did Rocky? Uh, Bill Conti. I got Bill Conti. Yep. Yeah, Bill Conti vinyl, Roman guitar vinyl. Boom. I got boom, one with some boom, Italian boom, dude on it. I don't boom, know who boom. it is, but it's it's slap. <laughs> yeah, you see, 
I got a lot of shit in there, man. Crazy. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff here. I've been, so I, I've just been awesome um, to be able to get. And, I, it, you know, it's so easy now. I don't know where the heck I got this thing. I just found it in my garage. At one point I, when I was a DJ, I must have been like, I need to get some of this vinyl on a computer. And I just bought it. And you said you buy yours from Walmart? Yeah, it's a Crossley. It's just that Crossley. It just like it was just like forty dollars. And it's got the USB yeah, plug to for your that computer, right? From Walmart about almost a year ago. A year. Nah, you just um you have to go. So if anyone's listening, okay, this is what you do. You get the vinyl and you go to Guitar Center, and there's a plug that plugs in from the back of your vinyl, the AV jacks, to your interface where you would usually plug your microphone in. It's, it's just, just taking, taking the signal, signal from your vinyl, vinyl to the, you know, you your know, interface, interface, so it's like another, another microphone. microphone. Yeah. And you got a clear, clear signal, It's man. like an auxiliary you know, channel. That's how you do it. Just a, yeah, you be set to go, man. Because the one I have. Exactly, that's, that's all it is. The one I have it literally has an USB cable coming out of it and goes right into the, right into the, right into the Mac. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh, you have. Okay, okay. okay, okay. That's, that's, that's simple, simple than the one I got. got. Yeah, it's called. Oh, yeah. The by the way, uh, what's it called? I sent you my my link. Oh, the ion. Okay, you. you yeah, I got the. These are cords. I just keep plugging back my vinyl, man. I got them from Guitar Center. It took me a while to find it, but hey, got my bread up. I said I need to sample all these vinyls. Hell yeah. So yeah, if anyone wants to, if any of you females out there besides getting me for Sole want the way to my heart. Give me a vine. Give me a record. There it is. Give me a record. That's, how you that's, do it. that's what he wants for Christmas. Chris Kratz yeah, wants the, vinyl for I Christmas. Just that. Amen. Amen. What'd you send me? If y'all can find a Delphonics vinyl, please. You just got a bonus. You might just get married. What is this? Uh, oh, beat the case Instagram short film? Of, the, um, of all my content. Yeah, yeah I, sent I sent you. Yeah, and the other one, after it on Instagram, is the um my what's it called my link that has all my stuff right there so it has beat the case in there as well so all right cool let's let's uh let's watch this in theater mode beat the case i'm done are we gonna be able to see it bro or am i gonna be able to see it too? yeah you can't see it on your end i can't send it to you but it's going out to twitch Oh, okay, okay, but they, they can, can see it. it. Yeah, they can All see right. it. Yeah. I can yeah, even blow it up. Part, my speaking, speaking part is like in the first, first, right, we'll is in the the first, first two. two. Are you talking on the phone right there? In the car? No, I think that's that's the other actor, Corey Briggs. I'm going to be, you're going to see, so I used to be really skinny. That's why the crackhead roll is perfect. I'm going to be a skinny dude, and I'm going to have a beanie, and I'm going to have, they did my makeup professionally. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Did you hear me? In the beginning? I did, um, Fuck Fake Friends. He did, he has, I'm on the soundtrack. It's called F Fuck Fake Friends. I don't think it's going to be. In the movie, but it's in the, the movie soundtrack, though. There's a whole playlist with the soundtrack. That was loud. The freaking intro song was freaking loud. They had it way, turned way up. Yeah, they, you know, it was something they had put together, but I was just, I was like, hey, but that was my first and only acting experience, and I wanted to keep acting, bro. Like, I'm looking for people, like, what does it take, you know? There you go. Are you in uh are you in Arizona right now? Oh there you are. <laughs> Hell no, bro. I moved back. Yeah, I moved back. Yeah, I moved back home. I'm in the in the Empire. Nice. You know, I'm back where I like grew up in. Yeah, so you don't know that man. I don't even think I'm alive right now. You don't laugh when you say a crackhead. That damn wind though. Where were you guys filming? Was this in Arizona? I know that was it was just a thing together. Yeah, that was in Arizona. At that at that film was in Arizona. That, that damn wind, dude. Arizona, Arizona wind drives you nuts. Yeah, they didn't have much. I know, right? Hey, what you doing? Hey, what you doing? Hey, uh. I got about 1,500, you know what I'm saying? 
got a little something, something for you. You know, you know I've been, I've been sick. You know what I'm saying? I need to get that good. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> short film uh who 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 wrote who wrote this film Corey Bricks. Brick. so, so the, the guy, guy that was, was racing, racing that plays the, the, the that, that was, was running, running from the undercover cop that's, that's his brother shout out to his brother yeah um but, but the, the one, one that was running the the, the slender dude shout out his name is Corey Corey Bricks is his order name his artist name uh tremendous character he came to me was like hey I got this script and I think this is a role that's perfect for you and I, and I think you can, can do it because of who you are as a person. person. You're a funny, funny dude, dude like, entertain like entertain people. Nice. And you can do this, and you got it in you, bro. His, his girlfriend, Shouse, his, his wife, Jocelyn, Jocelyn um, they, they did my makeup, makeup professionally. professionally. About, took about 30, 45 minutes. She did it. Had me looking like a crackhead. I had the beanie. I had the outfit ready, and I acted my ass off, and it was the fun shit ever. Nice. And it was the best. It was the best, bro. Like Honestly, bro, and I could act any time, bro. So hopefully... Like, like I said, I said I'm, I'm back, back home in California. California. If y'all got, got short films you want me to be a part of, please, please I would love to. Like, I love that shit. That's yeah, like a we got to connect you to KYFFMS. Uh, th these guys are uh, these guys were in the studio about a month ago. They make short films. They make horror films and stuff like that. So we got to connect you with those guys. They're here in uh, Whittier, though. Oh, oh hell yeah! yeah. Where you, where is where, where, where's Woody at? That's closer to Victorville, or no? It's close to LA. It's like um, it's like it's it's like Woodier, then um, Pico Rivera, then Montebello, then East LA, then okay, LA. I know Pico Rivera, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah was, next door to Pico Rivera. Just there, literally today. We just came back from LA today. There you go. See you. Okay, so I know where you. I was just just lost. I went to go. By Nipsey Hustle. Yeah, so I was just there today. Um, I would love to. Please make that connect, man. And if they don't even want to cast me as an actor, which I would love to, guess who's gonna make up the fucking sound? There you go. First of all, um, I made a sound for a movie called The Photo Book on Tubi, and I made loops for a Houston, Texas filmmaker named Kenny Summers, an awesome musician. Yeah, it's on Tubi. It's called The Photo Book. It's on Tubi. And, and one of my loops is in there. I made him. I sent him a loop pack of horror sounds, and he put it in there. So thank you, Kenny, for putting me on because I love doing sound design for films, television, games, for commercial ads, etc. That's another thing. Like I'm literally an, an audio master. That's what I love to do. And he gave me the opportunity, and I'm thankful for that. So the worst case scenario, they're like, Nah, we don't want to cast. We don't got that. Guess what? I'll make a fucking score for that film for you, bro. There you go. Those sound effects are good. Like, I'm, I'm literally, literally the sound. Yeah, because it would be a drive for yeah. you to have to come I'm down here geek. and uh, act. But if you can at least make the sound or something, that'd be tight. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's dedication and discipline. I'll talk to my dad and say, hey, yo, can you take me down to L.A. to act real quick? I got this. Trust me. He he sees me making moves and not being on the streets or wasting my life. He sees, he sees how focused I am on this shit. He's going to do it. Hey, shout out to my dad, my favorite person in the world. He don't know it. He probably do, but he probably, he humble as fuck. You know, I love him. Um, 
he is taking, taking me to a studio session, session that I have with Fade, your homie Fade, the homie Fade, and uh, uh, producer and engineer Grammy, producer, producer and engineer Billboard, Billboard Oliver Brazil, Brazil, who is yeah. the Kevin Gates, Gates NBA Youngboy, the Mexican OT, OT Don Tolliver, and a lot of mainstream dudes. dudes. My dad, dad is taking me down there. there. I got invited to that session, session and guess who's going to be in the drums behind that? Damn. So shout out to my dad for making that. Effort, effort taken, taken. yeah. Got to have that support. I love that. Yeah, man. I, I love them. That's it's essential. I love my mom. Hell, Hell yeah, yeah. They, they support, support me. me. Yeah, yeah, man. When my, my dad, dad like, because, like, my dad, dad he, he got me on a lot of old school music. music so, so he, he not, not really, really going to like rap, rap unless it's old school, old school like Wu-Tang, like, like I like. So he going to like the new stuff. But he heard me rap on the latest track, New Quest. And he knocked on my door and said, son, was that you? I said, yeah, come on. said, yo. You can rap. That's some good ass music. That's what I'm talking about. He had that approval. I said, for real, man, you know, he's 60 years old. He ain't trying to be about some hip hop, but he was loving it. He said it was raw. He said he loved it. He said I got better. And I was just like, so my own dad is approving? And then if that approves, my mom for sure. I know, I know my mom probably heard it. My mom is um I love her, but she don't really like hip hop. Not even the fresh prince type of shit, you know. Wow, not even the real hip hop. Love the shit too. She was just like well, let's listen to what they were listening yeah, to. Yeah, she just don't, don't like it. She the like, new quest. Like country. Run that. There we go. That beautiful guitar in the front. Boom bat. We want a little bit more. Give me some of that real. <laughs> hey, yo, it's 2024, man. It's great to be alive. About to be 30, so it's time that I thrive. The pain is in my past, so that's where it's gonna reside. I look real nice, so I might find me a wife. Might find a better job, might find a label. God is real good, he put food on my table. I'm willing and able, life is changing for the better. A tribe called Quest on my sweater. However, to have doubts now i'm positive like magic things happen for a reason i'm just glad that they happen malcolm x is dead so i'm preaching while i'm rapping machiavelli's gone and the industry is tragic these new school dudes only looking for the clout they ain't even got the art tell me what's it all about you proud of your art then you should showcase my 16s lighting up the whole place Despite the you know, situation, everything that you're going through, and you know the couple years that I've known you, you don't allow yourself to be defeated. You know what I'm saying? And even when you're probably not feeling your best, like you still determined to make some shake, bro. And that's all you really need to be successful. So I'm proud of you. I'm praying for you. As long as you keep God first, you're humble enough to know that you're still human, or confident enough to know that you can make it, you're gonna be all right. Hold on, that is going right to my list. Hold on a second, like songs. How do you, hold on a second, hold on a second. This got that kind of Nas feel with Tribe Called Quests, old school. This this tells me you understand some stuff. Um, let me add this to my next show. Yeah. I see my life flash before my damn. So I sampled a guitar. From, from some, some artist, artist some, some producer named Ado A D O H on Instagram and hey, the show. I chopped, chopped that up and then I added some, some piano. piano. Yeah, 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 definitely Ado. Shout out to Ado. I added some piano to it. I added some roads and then I used a shout out to Unison. I used Sound Doctor on it and get that nice sound. And then I used my favorite drums, y'all, the SP twelve hundred. SP-1200 drums. Wu-Tang used them. Um, yeah. My favorite drum is to use. East Coast that, drums. That. You, want you want me to get in the cypher? That's, that's what I'm going to do. Give me those drums. Nice. Yeah, and uh, definitely. And um, there's a, you hear that? No, that's that's, 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 that's the Tribe Called Quest. That's that's Q-Tip saying, check the rhyme, yo. You know the song, check the rhyme, my Tribe Called Quest? Check the rhyme, yo. That's sampled in there. Check the rhyme, yo. And it's chopped up. That's what that is. And then once again, like I said, I always want to include the homies, right? Auburn J, that that sample that saying that you can always get make shit happen, that person talking, that's Auburn J, the guy we collab with out of Houston, Texas. 
he sent me a Snapchat video saying those words. Oh, I did. Yeah, I screen recorded it. I said, hey, dog, I'm going to sample this in the song, bro. I replayed it so I can screen record it. I'm going to sample this in the song. And then I put it right there. And that Damn. that's the post-production in me. That's the creator. Shit. Yeah, you, like, you know, you yeah, can grab sound yeah, here, music, from there, the from anywhere. And you know how to get it into the machine. Like, not all of us know how to do that. Like, and get the sound and put it in the machine. That's the hard part is knowing how to do all that. And that's what you do. That's the engineer stuff. Holy moly. What about uh, any, any upcoming exactly. shows that we should know about? Yeah, you can use It's, it's whoever, whoever wants, wants to book me, me whoever is there, there, I'm ready. You know, I'm in the Inland Empire, Empire area. I'm, I'm willing. I just had a show in Los Angeles, so I love performing in Los Angeles, my favorite city. Shout out to LA. Shout out to Skip Town Playhouse for the opportunity. Yeah. Shout out to H Boy and Big M for making that shit happen. I love you, H Boy. His real name is Ernesto. He's another artist as well. He's a little younger than me, but he got his head on straight. He he paid for the venue. He made it happen. He picked me up. I have epilepsy, so I can't drive until November. November. I had a seizure recently, mm, but sorry to hear that. he picked me up, took me there. We had a ball. It was the first time performing. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got it for a reason. You know, I, I'm still, I think having epilepsy allowed me to focus and not want to do extra things. You know what I mean? Stayed at home in the studio, perfect the craft. Slow you it's, down it's a little a, bit it's to actually a blessing get focused. Just, nigga, got to take medication. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly, exactly right, right. So, so it makes, makes me work harder because when you got epilepsy and also adhd it's hard for you to you got to work five times as hard just to be a normal speed well me working five times as hard is just me like outworking myself but in a good way so my work ethic became serious so i became more focused and stuff and i think it's a cheat code to life to be honest work, yeah that's you your superpower work, five times as hard to fill up the speed and guess, guess what? what now I'm exactly, exactly right. right so, so this creative, creative stuff, stuff is Probably because I got epilepsy, thank God. I'm not, I'm not even going to trip it. I'm going to just look at it as a blessing in disguise. I always tell people when they throw mud at you, make a hut. That's the mud that's thrown at me. It's a hut. Nice. I may not be able to play football, but guess what? I'm 5'7", 210 pounds. You know what I mean? I'm a shorty. I ain't going to be playing no professional sport anyways. I'm meant to entertain people. You know what I mean? That's right. That's just God saying, hey, stay at home, stay in the studio. Do acting, do music. You know what I mean? So... But, but yeah, yeah, as far as, as upcoming shows, shows I'm, I'm praying, praying that I get booked soon. I'm praying there's opportunities and stuff. Right, right now, now, you know, you know I'm really I'm working on music, new music. I'm um, mixing, mixing some music that I recorded months ago and stuff, so I can release singles for y'all. Working, working on a couple projects, projects you, know, you know, obviously producing stuff. So, so I'm, I'm just always ready. Just you know, prepare for those monthly drops and stuff. You know what I mean? I got a song that. Um, I recorded months ago called Cobra Kai with the K instead. Nice. You know, the chorus goes strike, strike first and strike hard with no mercy. <laughs> Cobra Kai, that's awesome. Boss, and I'm still working. You know, it's... Um, Some karate kid action. Yeah, it's the, and I sampled with Johnny Lawrence in the song from Cobra Kai. Hell yeah. I just, you know, shout out to Cobra Kai for being an inspirational, you know, just being an inspiration to me in general. At least Karate Kid. I've seen all Karate Kids, but... When they, they dropped, dropped the show, show Cobra Kai, I love that shit. I just watched Dude, that was the first, great. And they, the that they did that. The first part of it. But yeah, I wrote a song. Made... Yeah, yeah I, they, they, I, I think I was... See, most shows, shows they, they, like, they like make spinoffs, spin whatever. And they, they don't, don't be doing, doing well. They don't hit, like, the actual one. Yeah. But I was surprised and how good and... I, I think because they did it different it, you know and they I mean? did it different so, than what you expect. You fan. you expected like Danielson to be the good guy. They flip it to where Danielson's the bad guy and the other bad guy is actually the good guy mm -hmm. trying to get his life together, trying to do the right thing, trying to work hard. And it's, it's different. So it's, that's why people, yeah, they connect with it. And, and if, if you, you watch, watch fucking, fucking, if you, if you watch, watch the show, show Johnny Lawrence, he becomes a family guy. He has a nice Latin wife, by the way. I know it's just acting, but he, <laughs> my dude, my dude got the dub with her. You know what I mean? He knows he what's got, up. Uh, you know he's a and he he's still doing this thing. And I saw, yeah, he knows what's up. He had to get in the spice. It's nice, bro. You spice gotta get that nice, spice. You know, spice makes life. <laughs> like, but um, he's, he's like, like the, the family, family guy, guy now. now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a, a good, good, you know, you know and, and it's just, just like, like and John, John Kreese is still fucking John Kreese, bro. He's still that, oh, I want to, you know what I mean? He's, he's still John Kreese. He's still the enemy. But, yeah. um, you know, they really did a good job with that show. And I always was like, yo, man, I can even see myself being on one of those shows. And if they're not going to be on it, let me at least make some music for it. You could be. But what inspired me to write the song 
Cobra Kai. Yeah, I, I low key could. Like, I, I can pull something off. But to have um, number one to be resilient, I'm always known to be resilient. And when I wrote that song, I was going through a, a, a kind of rough patch in life and stuff in Arizona. And I just wrote from my heart. And um, I had bought a guitar pack from Somatics. And the, and the guitar is hit, and I was, I was able, able to write. I actually was on the toilet when I wrote that, bro. I was like, damn. You know, <laughs> but I, just, I, just, I stayed on toilet, and I wrote the whole thing, and, and I recorded it, and then re-recorded it, and now I'm about, about to mix it again, again and, and finally had the final master. master. Now, now, the release date, date you know, I'm going to just be like, I'm going to just try to release it maybe in August for y'all and everything, because, you know, me, I take pride in my quality. But the song is already done, y'all, and I don't mind. There's leaks of it, you know what I mean? There's, There's leaks, leaks of it on YouTube. YouTube. There's, There's leaks, leaks of it in a couple of reels. I nice. cannot wait to drop the final product. You know, the artwork's done. I'm, I'm just excited, excited for it. You know, I said, I'm going to drop it on Cobra Kai. And Cobra Kai just dropped another season. season. It's coming out in August, y'all. So y'all keep, keep, keep it locked, locked for Cobra Kai with a K. K. <laughs> there it is. Are you going to get some of these 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 single releases like, like a lot of people do? Take some of these single releases that you've released and put them all into an EP the way you did with Picante? So yes and no, because my work ethic is off the roof. And when I work, I'm the happiest when I'm working on albums and EPs, right? So um, I'll be recording these singles, making these singles, but actually also working on other songs on the side. And I like my albums to kind of have a common theme. Like mm -hmm. the album Raw is just like all sampled and old school and like, you know, creative production and stuff like that. You know, I want to have a project that have a common theme, whether it's a common story or it's a storyline or something from it. This next project I want to do, I want to utilize the fuck out of live instruments. The same way that um, Wu-Tang, when they dropped 36 Chambers, it was sampled, right? And then they go and drop uh, Wu-Tang Forever. Those are live violins, live instruments. It's the same the same concept. So I'm dropping singles. These are just like, hey, I made this. It might make the album. But, but it for sure, sure it's going to be released because I'm proud of it. I'm not just going to sit on it, you know? And then I'll be yeah. working on the album on the side, and that's where I start hitting up the people I want to collab. Yeah. Interesting. So, so way of doing to, it. to help the audience understand, and stuff. so... so it sounds so it's, it's really cool it's you have so much material does it is it what you're saying is that sing the singles that you put out they're almost meant to be singles and then you also have these projects these huge projects where you have like 10 15 songs that are themed out to be this one ep so they're kind of a separate entities is that what's going on Mm -hmm. that's cool exactly and if, and if i got, got yeah, yeah so i'm so like releasing singles, singles that's, that's just singles, singles. Yeah, yeah think of singles, singles as a warm-up warm before your actual race okay and the race can Damn. be albums and eps you know some I mean? people like just fun. yeah just so just, ha just, just practice just happy they have the warm-up <laughs> you, you, that's just a warm-up for you that's awesome they, that means you got you, that means you're able to put out a lot of material like prince yeah Exactly. exactly. Um, I actually am. A, I studied Prince and Michael Jackson's work ethic. And Prince, if you look at the interviews, he likes to have a lot of material. But the reason is because he gets a good amount of rest, and his work ethic is off the roof. He finds ways to utilize his voice as an instrument, and he never runs out of material. And there's still, he has a whole vault. Rest in peace, Prince. But he has a whole vault of like unreleased stuff because that's how he was working. That's the only way to do it. And, and believe, believe it or not, I mean, I mean there's some stuff out there that he probably could have dropped. He thought, he thought it wasn't good. But we would have thought it was good. And this is the same thing I go with. So I'm just like, yeah, I have it. You know, I always there, there's never a day where, oh, he doesn't have anything new. He hasn't had something new in a year or six months. Like, it's never, bro. Because if I ain't releasing singles or something, bro, I'm releasing new beats. Or I just made a sound kit or something. Or I'm making sounds for a movie or a video game. But, bro, I've all, I always got music. This, I'm making it amazing I'm trying to record because I'm always producing right cool I'm always writing always writing and the next part is just okay go right here on this very microphone and record record get it you know what I mean and just that's it it's it's a non-stop thing and I'm not exhausted because I take my time with it I make sure I focus on quality instead of quantity most of the underground people are in a rat race where they want to you know, you know, try to have, have the most singles, singles out. out. But then, but then like, like, there'll be like one good single and like 
like fucking 20, 20 mid mid sub par singles. singles. And I, I can't, can't do that. that. I'd rather have, have these bomb singles, singles that keep dropping. Yeah. And they're like, like dang, I like this guy's music and he's dropping like monthly or bi weekly or whatever. And then it's like, like when the fuck is he gonna drop an EP or album? So, so when you drop the album, album they're, they're already hip to you, and they're like, yo, yo I want to hear because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, I heard New Quest, I heard Self, I heard Picante, I heard Soul Beat Tape. tape. I want to hear him drop something new. new. And, and who, who is he going to recruit? Who is he going to collab with to make this album something? Because I know that he's going to be like Dr. Dre or even fucking Childish Gambino and be strategic with the release of an album and have a storyline behind it. You know what I mean? 100%. That's how I think, bro. So these singles, like I said, they're warm ups. Yeah, they're warm ups, and they're gonna they're gonna keep you there so you don't get be like, oh, he ain't gonna drop nothing. Nah, it's gonna keep you there. I'm sure you that I'm putting in work. And if the single is good enough and it fits the concept of the album or the EP, then I'm gonna just put it on there. You know what I mean? That's what it is. But it just kind of gets you out there. And secondly, the best part about that is the more recent music you have and the people see your catalog, they're gonna want to book you, bro. Venues are gonna want to book you, or they're just gonna hit you up to collab. Hey man, I like what you did in that song, man. Can we collab, bro? I got an open verse, da da da. Or can you produce something for me? And then da 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 da. Hell yeah, you know what I mean. Let's talk business. Let's get this stuff done. Cause I'm in it for the inspiration, bro. It's a whole family that you can build around music. You know what I mean? And you collab with the right people. You just become friends, develop relationships. You're gonna climb ladders faster than you just trying to do everything by yourself, which is the curse that I had in the early part of my career. And I'm, and I'm barely, barely just, just now, now starting, starting to take, take pride in and in, 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 in prioritize collaborations. collaborations. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I just know that if you're working with me as an artist, producer, whatever you are, just know that I'm about it, about it. And you know what I mean? And I'm going to make sure that shit's going to be perfect. And then I'm going to make a whole fucking press run about it. You know what I mean? I'm really nice. going to put shit out there as opposed to this. Oh, we did a track. Oh, he's in the open verse. I rapped and released it. So I'm strategic about my shit. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what. It is something to listen to. It is something, something, something. It got you on the show. You, it, Faye told me about you. Listened to the stuff and loved it immediately. And it got you on. So you're absolutely right about that. If you have something out there that's that, you know, like is that thing, um, you know, not uh, not that I'm picky or anything like that. I don't let like some 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 st some stuff I just can't let on the show. But when I heard your stuff, I was like, yes. And then I said, can we do it tonight? <laughs> so that's how quick we got it. So I really appreciate you doing this, Chris. The name is Chris Karatz. It came on immediately. I just said, let's do this. And he's like, yes. So I appreciate you doing this last minute. And look what we got. We got an amazing show with Chris Karatz, the producer, actor, writer, producer, MC, mixing engineer. He does it all. If you need him to do something in music, he can make it happen. That's Chris Karatz. My man, thank you so much for coming on the show. My, My pleasure. pleasure. Thank, thank you for having me, King. King. I really I respect, respect you, and you have blessing, man. Like, Amen. I mean, they, they need more of you, bro. They need more of you out there. I'm telling you that. Uh, thank you so much. And next time you want to come on, let me know if you want to do a music show, if you've got some topics to talk about, or you got a big album release, come on the show. This is your show now. Good motherfucking looking. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and before we leave, I want to yes, shout out to my parents for supporting me, my Amen. sister Angel. Shout out to my other sister, sister Shavi, my, my, my two daughters, daughters Samantha, Savannah, Savannah Daddy, Daddy loves, loves you, I miss, I miss you, I will see you soon. soon. My oldest son is about to be 10. Dude, you're, you're a king, king. you're a you're legend, you got, you got mad swag, bro. Forget, forget what anyone ever says, says about you. you. And, and all, all my three kids, kids I don't know if y'all listening, y'all playing video games, whatever you're doing, okay? Just know that Daddy is going hard in the paint for y'all. Everything I do for my nine to five from music, it's for y'all, okay? okay? This, this is, is all for y'all. So y'all have a legacy to fall back on. I got y'all back. I love you. Last but not least, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for just blessing me with my man Ray, with blessing me with Fade, with, with all these opportunities. And I'm to all my fans and supporters out there, there's a lot of new shit coming, and I'm not letting y'all down. Slide in my DMs if y'all want to put in the work and be inspired. If you're having a bad day, I'm a mean king, too. I love, I love you. you. I, I got, got you guys. guys. And I, I hope, hope you guys, guys all get your bag and all become prosperous and do and be happy with everything you do. Stay, stay true to yourself and, and always think the highest above. Always, always be thankful for life itself because that's, that's all you got. got. You got life. It's, it's all about, about you. you. F what anybody thinks. Worry about yourself first. 
And like the song self says, you know, you got God on your side. You don't need nothing else. I love you guys, and I hope you guys are staying blessed out there, man. There it is. Thank you so much. Chris Karatz is the name. Find him on Spotify, YouTube, and all the other platforms, and on the Race Blaze Radio Show, now streaming on the regular. You guys just saw me put it in my likes and my playlist, and we're going to be playing his music. And if I forget to play his music, please remind me, because I love this stuff. I love the Picante, the whole album. I want to start playing a bunch of that stuff, guys. It's going to be on the Race Blaze Radio Show. Just another beautiful artist that we have here on the Race Blaze Radio Show. Just like Faye Dresto, again, and Faye Dresto, thank you so much for telling me about Chris. Guys, go find Chris right now on Spotify. Juice Gang Gang, Juice Gang Gang is my family. Thank you so much for listening. Stay thirsty, my friends, and not dangerous. Have a great one.